Hello and um, welcome to the class. I'll, I'll be teaching you wet felting. Um, I have my mom here to help as um, an assistant because uh, she's done this before too. She makes scarves and I'll have, be showing you some of the scarves you can do which is the same concept uh, as these um, at kind of towards the end of the video. Uh, to start out I'm just doing a kind of basic more um, abstract piece. Um, just real simple because I can spend hours laying everything out uh, and I didn't want to take up so much time but you'll get the general idea and concept and be able to create your own and be super creative. Hope you enjoy. Cool. So I'm going to be showing how to do um, kind of wet felted kind of paintings artworks. For this one we're just going to do something that's more abstract instead of you know a kind of landscape but um, I'll kind of say, tell you how to, you can do those kind of landscape specific images as well. So first you want a mat, um, bubble wrap down and then a mat. Um, you can use the mats you use for rolling sushi, kind of that works as well. So you just want to lay that on top of the bubble wrap and then you want to take the wool roving, which is this stuff here. Um, and you tear a piece kind of as long as kind of the mat you're working with and then once you have that down you just want to kind of like this one start kind of spreading it out so you want it kind of as flat as possible and I want to fill in all the gaps Once that's done, you want to take another piece and you want to make it kind of the same kind of length um, or height, I should say, since we did the length. So once you do that, you want to do the same thing, just kind of take it and get it all spread out and flat. This is the base. So once that's done, you can start kind of working with the colors. Um, we have a variety of colors here. Um, and so then once you start laying down, you just want to take a kind of little piece, spread it out, spread it out, and then kind of start kind of making a shape. I'll do the blues kind of towards the top, kind of do more of like an abstract kind of landscape sky so you want to just start filling in
Can I interject? Yeah. Can I talk? <clears throat> when you when you tear off the pieces of wool woving, if you hold your hands, if you try to tear it off with your hands close together, it won't work very well. So if you keep your hands a few inches apart and gently, gently tease it out, uh, that's, that's a better technique. And if you don't want the white to show through, then you can cover it quite well with the, the colours. doing that, could I show yeah. them a couple of the felted pictures here or not? Yeah, you can. I posted photos of oh, okay. those. Okay. Um, I figured they'd be easier to see by kind of the photograph. Bella is coming to see, coming to watch. Hi, Bella. You're going to watch? Yes. I know. Come on then. Now, if you're wanting to do something um, that's more kind of, you know, like the landscapes from the photos, you know, where you have the houses and stuff, um, they do make what's called pre-felt, which is kind of multiple colors like this. And so you can just kind of cut out the shapes so for a house, you can kind of cut out like a general house shape, you know, and then kind of lay it down where you want. Um, and they have it in, you know, varieties of colors. Um, you can even actually, using the wool roving, you could even flatten it out and cut out a shape with the, 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 the wool yeah. roving that, that Jonathan's using. Yeah, so design. if you do kind of flatten out and then cut out, you could cut out the, shape. the shape you want of that as well. Yeah. But we're just doing a basic kind of tutorial, just having fun. Bella's lost interest. <laughs> Dobby. We have yeah. another, another yeah, they've friend seen, here. We've Dobby. seen plenty of pictures of Dobby. Hi, Dobby. He's a good boy.
lay down. Now you want some silk fibre yeah. to add to it, so I can get that when I can put this down. Yeah, I'll take that through in a second. Now the silk fibre kind of might say eight. more too, but it's uh, it'll give a little kind of texture, kind of and a, and a um, sort of a shimmery, a type, shimmery yeah, right feel to it. it, yeah, highlighting things. So this is uh, so you can see better the kind of just general layout I have. Um, I'll be using kind of the black and stuff to kind of go over and do some other shapes. But you can just have fun with it. Um, I like kind of doing more abstract to start with, and then once you get the technique and hang of that, um, you can definitely do more of the kind of. Um, realistic kind of landscapes and you know with skies and buildings and trees for instance yeah so here's the this is actually, can just... yeah this is the silk um, roving so you can see how it's kind of shimmery and light um, a little different texture than this um, it's also silk cool. use a bit of yeah. that so take this again. Yeah, this is fine. Take a little blue to ignore my hand, sorry. Okay, um, I can take it if you want. Yeah, so kind of give the phone back. So with the rove <laughs> We're not contagious in this house, um, but you can just lay down the, kind of give it a little shimmer in parts. Um, let's add some red down here. Keep catching sight of that piece of lime green. Uh, yeah. We don't want. That no, green. I was gonna kind of do some black on top. Yeah. Just be careful with black because it tends to overpower. Yeah. So I would use much less than you think you need. You can always once it's. Once you've wetted it down, before you begin the real felting, you can always make minor adjustments. Maybe take off bits you don't like, add a couple more bits.
It's kind of too much shape that kind of has movement. Um, just a kind of um, just kind of abstract kind of body with you know the body and arms and um, legs, just kind of more a dancer, kind of free flowing. Uh, but you can do whatever you want. First of all, I thought it was you were going for sort of pure clay when you began to do a, a shape, and then I thought maybe you were going for ruo with the sort of broader, thicker outlines. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of um, playing around with the kind of flow. Oh good, I was hoping you'd put some of that in. So once you kind of are happy with kind of how it is, um, you know, it's hard to get a full kind of idea, but once you wet it down, you kind of see better on, you know, once it's compacted, it'll change. Once it's wetted kind of down, how it it'll looks, change. and then you can make changes from there. So okay. now that we have have it all laid out, um, we're ready to kind of wet it down. And to wet it down, you just want a spray bottle of soap. And then um, about dish a soap. Yeah, tea, a spray bottle of water, and then like a teaspoon of dish soap, um, or so. Just you don't want it super soapy. You don't need you to don't shake want it. You can just warm water is is a good idea to start with. Yeah. So mm. cover it with that. with a like a piece of cloth, something t um, like nylon yeah. or. Yeah, just uh, any synthetic. kind of old, like, synthetic material you have laying around. So then you just kind of lay that on top. And you lay it on top so that when you wet it down with soap and water, you don't displace the wall underneath. Yeah. So you're going to keep that on for a while while you continue starting it. Yes. But we uh, need to go get the soap and water. Yes, just push it. So we shall right we turn this off. A couple minutes. Cool. So we're back. We moved the wool out of the way. Um, when you do this part, you don't want the loose wool um, to get wet because then it'll start kind of felting together. Um, and you don't want that to happen. So um, we have a spray bottle with water and soap. Um, we use Dawn dish soap, but you can use any kind of you can dish use, soap. You could use olive oil soap. Yeah. Which you could then so what you want to do is you just want to kind of spray it down. You want to get it saturated without like real dripping kind of um, but the, the, wet. The water wet. has to really kind of go right through the wall so that it is completely wet. So once, so spray, but you can take a kind of plastic bag um, with your hand. And then you just want to kind of just get it, kind of wet it down. 
little plastic bag, you can just kind of just press it down. Best. Press down and just kind of guide it better with the kind of plastic bag. And I can feel it needs more water. Yeah. So I can see here. I can do two things at once. Spray. by pressing and then yeah. once it's pressed you can then move, you can sort of slowly glide your hands on steps, you know, add water, but it's better to kind of need more water and keep adding it than to just add a lot up front and then getting it too wet. down you want to put pressure on it just to make sure the kind of soapy water penetrates all the wool And then once it seems that it's, you've, it's really been flattened and I can feel that it would probably need some more water. Um, so we'll put a little more down. Okay. Just go over it, sort of doing yeah. a gentle, you know, just to sort of really encourage the wool to take up the water. Probably, ideally, do this uh, for about about five five minutes. We, we may not film the whole five minutes, but it'll probably take about five minutes of this. And then um, checking very carefully, checking underneath the cloth to see if it, if it feels that it needs more water. 
as it's dry. So you have to be just real. You have to sort of let your fingers do this so that you don't get the. Pull up the wall with right. it. So you may find that the edges need some of those edges need more. You start to see. But when you wet it down. Maybe you can change a little more water. Good, actually, if you at this point, if you take the cloth off very gently, if you wanted to make any minor adjustments, you could you could do that. Yeah. So so you can kind of see how it looks once it's wetting. So you can make adjustments if you want. wall spreads so anything that you think you put down as a narrow line will broaden out yeah and you can see how before the black looks so kind of light but now it and really now it's kind very, of yeah darkened a lot that's what i meant about yeah it kind of depending on what the effect you want it can be overpowering cool so yeah you can that's kind really of cool. begin to see kind of how it looks i think since we have some white showing um i'm just going to add a little more the light blue. There's a little piece on the floor here. I'll it for you. So just add. I mean, if you like the way it's showing, you, know, you can definitely. Yeah. You don't have to add more. Right. You um, can just do what you feel like. Also gonna add a little kind of down here to kind of break up just a kind of dark block. So it's not so kind of and then what you can do is you can actually then just Wet it down without. I'll just do a little bit of this for you. It's like trying to tap my head and rub my belly at the same time. Just to break up this solid green. Um, just to kind of break it up, add a little more texture. Just finish kind of wetting the pieces down that we put down. Okay, so I think once you've got it to the way you want it, then we we'll cover it again with the cloth and continue gentle but firm pressure 
moving your hands around to really, really get the wool saturated yeah. Just and beginning to felt. Highlighting these little areas. So maybe this would be a good time to turn off and you can just, because this is going yeah, to be we'll come back. five minutes of, and then we'll come back to continuing with the next step. So shall I turn off? Sure. So back for a quick moment so you can see it kind of fully wet and how flat it is um, compared to before. So now, you know, it's flat. We're just going to kind of do circles around pressure. with some pressure. And then you can do circles or you can just go kind of back to four, up and down. But you want to get pressure in there. Um, you want to get that pressure to get all that kind of soapy water in all the wool and kind of get it all flattened in there. But now you can kind of start to see the design through the fabric. Um, because of how wet it is. So we've gotten it all flattened, all the water in. So we just transferred the bubble wrap with the wool and the nylon on top. We just transferred it into a hot hand towel. Um, we figure most people have hand towels around. You can always use a pool noodle and wrap around the pool noodle, but um, you know it's not something most people have laying around their house. So um, just. Make it easier, you know, you can do it this way too. You don't need the pool noodle. So you just start rolling up the bubble wrap and the wool. And everything, you just kind of roll it up. And then you can roll it in, in roll, roll the towel around it. And then roll the towel around. And then you start rolling backwards and forwards. You want to tie off the towel. Um, you don't with the towel. I don't. I, oh. I don't need to bother. Yeah, with when the, using a pool noodle, I would tie um, off. You want yeah. to tie the ends. Right. Um. So then they kind of stay. Yeah. So it's on. The towel helps. So you're going to be doing about two hundred rolls. Fairly at the moment, sort of kind of not lightish pressure but you're kind of getting friction going here. And so you'll do 200 rolls in this direction, undo it and move it, change it to a 40 foot, now it's a 90 degree angle, anyway. Yeah, a 90, right, 90 degree, degree angle. Right, 90 degree angle. So that you're going to be rolling 200, 200, 200, 200 in each direction. Um, and then, Probably at that point you can take the nylon topping off. Yeah, so we'll come back at that point. Okay, so we'll turn off again. So I've done kind of um, in total 400, I'm about halfway through. Just wanted to show um, how you'll see when you unroll it after each 200 rolls, um, it starts shrinking down. So you can remember it was kind of a lot kind of wider and kind of everything, but now it starts shrinking. So um, it was, I had it turn like this, so we're just going to re-roll it like this um, to show about every 200, about kind of re-rolling, um, just so you can make sure you get it all, the friction of rolling it is what binds all the loose wool together. So by kind of re-rolling it in different, um, after 90 degree turns, um, make sure you get helps make sure you get all the kind of wool going, not just in one direction. So we roll again, and now we start 200 again. Cool. So we did the 200, oh, so now we unwrapped it. Or rather 800 altogether. Yeah, 800 altogether, right. but we did the four 200s. 
So now we can kind of pull, take this off, and you can see it comes off pretty easily now. And you can see it's kind of shrunk down, so you can kind of pull it. Okay, now stretch it back out to the kind of shape we had before. But the stretching kind of helps to strengthen it too. So you don't, yeah, you don't need to do it. Yeah, I know. Just to get it into shape. I've, I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is mother son kind of stuff. Stuff just with the bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. and basically the same, the same thing we're going to be doing. And roll up in the towel. Roughly, let's say even 100, 150 in each direction. And when we say roll too, we don't mean like full rolls. Well, you can do full. Rolls. Yeah, you can, but you know what. But you can also just kind of right. back and forth as, yeah. you know, one, two, three, four. That way people right. aren't kind of yeah. doing all yes. the way. Yeah. But you'll see it is a good workout because you do get right. kind of hot and arms get sore. But this is the perfect time to kind of sit in front of the TV, you know, binge yeah. watch Netflix yeah. while your you're... Feet. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't take as long because you're going to frame it or just have it hanging on the wall. It's not like it has to be so well felted that it's um, that you you could wear it as a scarf or something like that. Yeah. Cool. So I would say probably do a hundred in each direction. Yeah, that's what I was planning okay. on. Shall I turn off again? Yeah. Cool. So now once you've kind of done the um, four hundred, you unroll it and you can see and you can see it's kind of real soapy. So once you've done this step. We then take it to the sink um, and you rinse it out with water and then you want to wring it out and squeeze out that extra water and then you kind of let it sit in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes and you come back and um, I'll let you know that next part. And so we have it in a bowl in warm water and so now take it out of the bowl and you be able to see by this step that it's all kind of um, doesn't stick together or anything. So you just want to squeeze it out. It's now feels like the felt 
kind of you buy in the stores. So just squeeze out all that extra water from soaking. And then once that's done, you just lay it back on the bubble wrap and stretch it back to size. And then you'll do another batch of rolling. Um, nothing too bad. Um, just lightly roll it um, for like 50 to 100 times um, in each way. But And then once that's done, you just unroll it and let it dry and we'll come back in a minute so now we're all done so we're just letting it dry and as it dries it'll lighten up um, but once it's dry for detailing you can always do um, little embroidery with embroidery thread to get some detailing in especially if you're doing like a landscape um, you can also um, do needle felting um, if you have a needle felting kit and have experience doing that. Um, the other thing you can do um, with it is with the wool, you know, you can always use pet hair, like dog hair, cat hair, you know, incorporate that into it. Um, good kind of keepsake for pets. Um, you can also use people hair too. Um, that's pretty much what dreads are. It's binding those together. Um, but using pet hair is always kind of cool, a um, little keepsake. Um, but with these um, instructions, you can also do, um, there's a lot you can do um, with it. And instead of using the base wool, you can always use silk. And I'll show you an example. So this is silk scarf. Um, my mom makes the scarves. And so you can always just lay out the wool on the silk. So here's an example of one of hers. So you can see that's just the silk instead of the wool backing that we have on this. Um, so you can just kind of lay out little designs on that and just kind of do it the same way with the rolling and binding. Um, another kind of example, uh, we were talking earlier about the pre-felt. So to get shapes, um, you can cut out kind of shapes out of the pre-felt, you know, and use that on the silk or on the wool um, as an example. Um, and then, um, yeah, so if you have any questions, a great book um, for kind of explaining and um, to help with learning is art and felt and stitch and this is kind of teaches you about doing more of the landscapes and uh, we did um, this is by um, Moy McKay and we just did I just did a simple kind of more abstract because laying out for doing landscapes like these um, does take quite a while um, especially if you're kind of you know, a typical artist and super kind of perfectionist and getting everything perfect but I hope you um, enjoyed this lesson and it'd be cool to see what you do. Bye.